We're live. We're here. It's 12 o'clock rock. It's Thursday, of course. And what does that mean? It means Aloha United we stand. We should stand Aloha United anyway. Mm -hmm. But we do, in fact, stand Aloha United way uh, at 12 noon on Thursday. And that's what we're here for. So uh, today our, our, our show is uh, about AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps Vista. We're going to talk about those two organizations, their connection and their presence in Hawaii. Daniel Jones, he's a Vista team leader. Hi, Daniel. Thanks for coming thank, down. Thank you for writing me. And we have uh, Angie Chapman. She's been here before with Aloha United Way. She is the Vista program coordinator for Aloha United mm -hmm. Way. Welcome again. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about, you know, what is it? But my preface to this is what we were talking about before the show began. Is in the middle 70s, um, Congress in his infinite <laughs> decision process, I wouldn't say wisdom, <laughs> <laughs> um, decided that we weren't going to have a draft anymore. So everybody was relieved because they were really fatigued over Vietnam. Mm -hmm. um, and so everybody was happy about that. You didn't have to register anymore and you didn't have any risk of being, you know, drafted into the Army or any service. And everybody felt good about that. But the long-term effect, not so good because mm -hmm. of, it's been, what, 30 years since then? 40? Mm -hmm. 40, 40, 40, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I minored in history in college. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and people d don't go into the Army. Volunteers go for their own reasons, and the Army, uh, the, all the military services try to recruit people and all that. Mm -hmm. But they don't have to go, and a lot of them don't go, and, and uh, um, so the, the country becomes a little polarized over those who go and those who don't go, and, and, and it would be better if you had to go, but not necessarily to war, but you could go and do national service. The important point is national service. And um, in fact, uh, you know, I think it's very interesting, and I didn't realize, I hadn't known this for a long time, I think I knew it once, that VISTA stands for Volunteers, are you, are you, are you listening to this? <laughs> volunteers in Service to America. So these people are serving America. That's the important point of it. And um, that ought to be, in my opinion, and I've said it before on the show, on all these shows, that ought to be required. That ought to be mandatory, as it is in so many other places. Uh, and people would get along with that. It'd be okay. How about, you know, learning about this country by serving this country in one way right. or the other? Yeah. Um, and we need that. And you, the, the public, needs that because, because that would connect you. That would connect people mm -hmm. to, to the country, make them feel part of it. Mm -hmm. We are it. It is us. It's not some distant organization that we can dump on all the time. Right. <laughs> it's not just that you have to pay taxes. Yeah. It's that you serve the country, you're part of the country. Anyway, so yeah. that is exactly what Vista is, and I am pleased to have you on the show. Yeah, Thank thanks you. for having us. Well, yeah, like you said, it's a great opportunity for young people to give back to their community. Um, the mission for AmeriCorps Vista is to alleviate poverty in our nation. So VISTAs go out to low-income communities and they can give back and serve. They make the commitment for a full one year, full-time um, commitment to either nonprofit organizations, public organizations, and help build their capacity to really solve problems instead of just patching them. So tell me the, mm -hmm. the pathway of it. I wake up one morning. And uh, maybe I called you anyway, but I wake up one morning and I decide that I want to be a member of VISTA. You've got to tell me the relationship of VISTA and AmeriCorps, but I decide mm -hmm. I want to be part of this group of organizations. Mm -hmm. um, what happens to me? What happens to you? Um, well, there's a little, a quite extensive application process online. Um, and then you can look through all of the positions available across the nation. And a lot of VISTA members like to go somewhere new because it's a lot of them are graduates, college graduates looking for an, a, an experience, um, getting networking. And so you can apply to a different state or within your home state. And then you would, if you have to relocate, you would be relocated and then start your full year after your training. It's like a three day training. Um, three weeks. Three day. Three days. Three day training, and then you start with the organization for that one year. After that year, um, 
you then can choose between an educational stipend or a cash stipend. A lot of people choose the educational stipend. It's like, is, that, is that money? Yep. It's $5,775. So that's why a lot of people go into it. They can put it towards their loan um, or future education. So the, the government gives, this federal government, yeah. it gives me money to, do, to educate myself. Mm -hmm. um, and this is while in my one year of obligated service? Yeah. So they get paid um, modest living allowances. Um, it's supposed to match the type of income that the community is getting, that, that you're serving. Um, so it's not big bucks? No. It's not big bucks. We're not talking about fifty, sixty, seventy thousand mm, dollars $70,000. Yeah. No, no. But you're paid <laughs> through experience and education. Um, How about my transportation and expenses? Transportation? If I, if I pick, for example, mm -hmm. Georgia, because I want to go to the back end of Georgia, I want to learn what goes on there. Mm -hmm. I want to see uh, James Dickey's uh, deliverance firsthand. I want to see <laughs> what it's like in the back end of Georgia. I want to I want to see the small towns. I want to see the people there. Or you know, I go to the, you know Shenandoah Valley there, and I want to see you know what the whole place is like. I want to mm -hmm. learn about it, and I want to bring whatever I have to them. Okay, I want to engage, pay my transportation. So the Vista's upfront travel costs, CNCS then reimburses the Vista member a few weeks after they start. That's how it works usually. Okay. And during, during my obligated service, what kind of, you know, money do I get? Do I get money to eat? Yes. <laughs> money okay. to eat and have a place to stay. Okay. Um, it does require the Vista members to live frugally, but as I said before, it's a really great educational experience, so you're still I'm getting sure paid. It is. Yeah. Um, it's great opportunities for future employment. Uh, VISTA members have first uh, choice for uh, government positions. Um, great on your resume. Federal government likes me because mm -hmm. I've done my national service. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, and then, yeah, after the one year, you can choose. Um, what kind of stipend you would like after you serve your one year? Oh, well, the stipend comes after. After, uh -huh. right. That's like a school, school grant kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Help me do education afterward. Mm -hmm. And that's more, that's nothing to do with the three-day training you talked about. No. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can go to school, college. Yeah, you could, mm-hmm. Or I can take anything, yeah. any trade course, whatever. Exactly. Okay. Or pay off loans. Can I stay longer than a year? Yeah. Can I stay for many years? Can I, can I write books about what I do, what I find, who I talk to? I can mean, I take video? <laughs> can I make a movie, a documentary? Can I, I mean, do that? go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you can. Um, and that's the thing, too. A lot of VISTA members, they'll make blogs about their experience, and they'll you know, have little short videos on YouTube about their experience as well. And you can serve up to five years in the VISTA program. So if you really feel you know, you're making the... I guess an impact in the community, you know, you can spend more time there to make sure that you can kind of see it through. Is this program well funded? You know, what I mean is, suppose there are, there's not just me. Mm -hmm. Suppose there are 10,000 people just like me mm -hmm. who all decide on a given Thursday they want to join <laughs> Vista yeah. and they all want to go into the, you know, the, the red states, if you will. Right. Um, they want to see the South right. uh, or they want to see. Neighborhoods where there are a lot of people who are disadvantaged. I want to go there, mm -hmm. and there are ten thousand of me. Will the, will the government take me, or are there or are there limitations? Um, they're necessarily not limitations. The um, the program is funded by Congress, and so oh them yeah them. Uh, <laughs> so they're funded by them, but it's more about the amount of nonprofits and public uh, agencies that actually need the vistas. So right now in Hawaii, what we're trying to do is figure out where, where's the need, what's the problem, where's the need, and how can a VISTA be able to come in and make an impact on that. So it's just providing, because a lot of nonprofits and public agencies don't know about VISTA, and so they're missing out on an opportunity for that resource, government resource to them that they can use. And so that's what we're trying to do here, um, the Aloha United Way in Hawaii and the VISTAs here in Hawaii. So Aloha United Way, what, what role do they play? Is it sort of a, a designated agency to con conduct or coordinate the program? Is that what it is? So we're acting as an intermediary agent. We're the second intermediary um, organization for CNCS in Hawaii. Um, Who's the first? 
Hawaii, Hawaiian community assets. So as an intermediary agent, um, we work with Corporation for National Community Service, which is what AmeriCorps VISTA is under. And then we work with the nonprofits where the VISTAs are placing. Do you get the money and, and distribute the money? Do you, do you act as a mm. sort of intermediary in the funding? Not for their pay. Um, but we they do. Get that directly there is the a cost government. share between us and CNCS. Yes. We put in some money, and then they put in some money, and then they directly pay the Vista members. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as the administrative things that need to go on, reporting, I kind of will do that for. We have ten sites that we're working with, ten different in nonprofits Hawaii. in Hawaii that we're working yeah. with. So I kind of do the administrative, the hiring, do a lot of you that. You do the recruiting. Do, so yeah, if I'm interested Daniel, one morning, yeah. well, which one are you guys? Both of you guys? Mm -hmm. So together. if I want to do this, I call either one? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, well, what do I call? Where's your website? If somebody <laughs> watching this wants to get involved, where do they go? Who do they talk to? Tell them how to reach you. Um, basically, what you want to do is, one, create a My AmeriCorps uh, account at myamericorps.gov, where you'll be able to create the application. My AmeriCorps, mm -hmm. C-O-R-P-S, myamericorps.gov. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And you can go there, and it'll show you basically all the positions we have in Hawaii, and you can apply directly to those. You just fill out this one application, and then you'll just click a button to select as many applications you want to apply to that you would like, and then um, we'll get the application, review it, and then call you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we're pretty new as far as this partnership with Corporation for National Community Service. We're getting a tab up on Aloha United Way's website soon so that it'll have all our contact information on there and you can um, get the links to apply. But um, So it's a brand new, we're still recruit, recruiting right now. We've got about six out of the ten positions. They'll serve their year, one year and then we'll re be recruiting for the next year. Okay. So there'll be lots of future opportunities. One more question before we take our break and that is what is the relationship between AmeriCorps and VISTA? Um, basically, um, VISTA was established with Kennedy, right, to give service back or to basically alleviate poverty within AmeriCorps or within the America. Uh, AmeriCorps is basically the umbrella. So they came in and decided that, you know, we would like to serve the community more. And so they created Senior Corps, um, which are... That's true. Senior people. Exactly. And then they created AmeriCorps in Triple C. This is basically young people, boots on the ground, um, helping out, mucking and gutting houses that have been in disasters and things like that. And so AmeriCorps just decided to become the umbrella of VISTA. So uh, AmeriCorps includes the VISTA program, the NCCC, as well as FEMA Corps and Senior Corps. You've been with this uh, organization for a while then, Daniel. Yeah, I was in the organization last year as a FEMA Corps team leader for the Baltimore uh, campus. That's the Federal Emergency Management Agency, mm -hmm. you know, the one that, that did New Orleans, so to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what I found out, too, with being in FEMA, like more you get in is that FEMA is actually necessary it's a reimbursement organization so they the city pays for the damages and then FEMA comes and reimburses them for the money yeah. but FEMA can't do anything until the governor has a state emergency and the president signs it yeah. yeah what about you I mean are you a career I mean you're certainly dedicated to this and you're dedicated to the the mission of, mm -hmm. of serving the country I really like that um, are you a career employee um, no, I'm also part of the AmeriCorps program as well as a VISTA, um, and my passion is more in helping people develop them as leaders, and so that's what I find, like, being a team leader helps them to develop them as leaders so they can serve the community, um, and that's what I found has been my passion so far. Are you a federal employee? Is that what you are? Um, I am not a federal employee. Employee. I'm more of a volunteer. Um, so all of the FEMA Corps, the AmeriCorps, all of AmeriCorps are volunteers uh, for the government to serve. Yeah, but they can all say the same thing. They're in service to America. That's right. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> it's like when I was in the service, you know, I, I was uh, in court martials because I was in the military, you know, and I would stand up in front of the, the judge in the court martial and say, May it please the court, my name is Jay Fidel, and I represent the United States of America. <laughs> it always turned me on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break now. <laughs> we'll be right back in one minute. 
Aloha, it's summertime in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm your host for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We're on every Tuesday at three o'clock and we talk about mental health and general health. Join us, thank you. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m., we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet in to us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Thank you. We are Aloha United We Stand, uh, which refers to Aloha United Way. And we have here today uh, two very, uh, what shall I say, um, big feeling people, deep, deeply, <laughs> deeply uh, engaged in um, trying to make life better in Hawaii. Uh, Daniel Jones, uh, he, he's a VISTA team leader, and uh, Angie Chapman, she is the VISTA program coordinator for Aloha United Way. I'm talking about uh, AmeriCorps VISTA in Hawaii. So I, I'd like to get an idea about how uh, the VISTA volunteers engage on the Outer Islands and in Oahu, mm -hmm. what they do, how they help, and their challenges. So tell me about the life of somebody who is committed to helping through VISTA. Okay. Um, so VISTA is all about helping to build the capacity of nonprofits and public organizations. Um, we have nine Vistas that are going to be placed on Oahu. A Vista is a person. A Vista is a member. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Do you yeah. wear a shirt like That's Daniel? Right. That? Yeah. I guess he does. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or she. Yeah. <laughs> we have nine on Oahu on one that will be placed on the outer island of Kauai. And the type of activities that they do is all non-direct capacity building. So they're not necessarily working directly with clients, directly with homelessness or the children themselves, but they develop systems and processes to help the nonprofit work better. The idea is that um, an organization will have a VISTA for uh, three years. It'll change each year as, there, as they'll get a new VISTA. And within those three years, the VISTA is trying to work themselves out of a job um, so that they're not needed and that they can create systems and processes that will be sustainable and help um, the nonprofit give back to the community. Mm. Example yeah. of a system or process? So um, Aloha United Way has focused with our partner agencies that have a VISTA. We ask that their VISTA be um, doing activities such as data collection and program evaluation. That's important. That's our focus for our 10 VISTAs in our project. How you get a handle on who's out there. Yeah. Uh, get, get identities mm -hmm. and yeah. numbers. Yeah. Yes. So as a fundraiser, Aloha United Way, um, we saw that need as numbers are very important for donors, us and other donor donors reports. So this can be whatever agency, whatever kind of data they're collecting, how many meals were served, how many children were given universal screenings, how many homeless people need health care. Um, so the nonprofits, they're working hard to provide services for their clients, but they don't necessarily have the funds, the resources, the staff to be doing all this data collection. So the VISTAs help the nonprofits that are out there. Is that yeah. what it is? Yeah. So, um, you assign them to a nonprofit? You tell them what their responsibility is vis a vis one nonprofit or another? So, the 10 nonprofits that we have on board with us, they have applied to get receive a VISTA. And through their application, they specified the type of um, duties that they would like the VISTA to do and if it aligned with what we wanted as far as the data collection um, and program evaluation, that's how we selected the sites that the VISTAs would be at. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they report back to you, Angie? Um, the VISTA members? So uh, the supervisors for the VISTA would be at the 
whatever agency they're with. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so I'm, they're attached to a given nonprofit, mm -hmm. and they help the nonprofit, and then the nonprofit, which in I guess many or most cases would be one of your beneficiaries, mm -hmm. right? Am I right? Nine uh, one out of your ten are. No, I, that's yeah. what I would have assumed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, it's so one big, one big happy group yeah. there. Yeah. So this, these are the guys that go back and forth between the organizations and sort of help help out mm -hmm. in terms of um, you know creating uh, a database, creating records, um, helping out uh, vis -a -vis the, re the relationship between that agency and you. Yeah. So whatever agency the Vista member is placed at, they are treated as a staff member there of that agency. Mm -hmm. okay. And then yeah, they report to this group. The agency does not pay for them. No. Mm -hmm. okay. You so pay for them, or or, or the federal government. Pays federal for them. government pays their okay. stipends. Yeah. So it's a great resource for them. Um, are they going to be at the soup kitchen? Are they going to be helping? Are they going to be? Well, know? that's one of the things that. Um, I'm here for is because I know that being part of AmeriCorps last year, it really helped to be a part of something that, you know, you can put your hands in and you can touch and feel. And so what we're trying to do is create those opportunities for the VISTAs to be able to, yeah, you're doing indirect service, you creating systems and data collection, but we're also here to help and to you know, pitch in. Exactly. You know, give in and, you know, help people. So what we're trying to do is create opportunities at least once a month or more to say, hey, we have this volunteer service opportunity you can come to, or even we have this professional development to help you um, with your, you know, next step in your career or with your job. And so we're, we're more or less coordinating those opportunities for them. Mm. Mm -hmm. So in, in, the, in the space of that year of service, uh, is there a track or you just put them out there? I mean, do they go through uh, you know, a beginning, middle, and an end of that one year? Or is it just uh, uh, do what you're told? Uh, basically, I guess they have what is called VAD. Um, that's our talk for basically your job description. And in that, within that job description, you have specific uh, dates that they want you to accomplish these certain objectives. And that uh, that's what brings I mean. throughout the whole year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's a program involved. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is a beginning, middle, and an end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. So um, what, who, are the, who are the people who are serving on this or who will serve? Um, are they young kids? Uh, could older people do it? Um, what are your target uh, demographics? Most of our applicants are college graduates. Um, you don't necessarily need to be a college graduate. You just need to be a U.S. citizen, 18 years or older, and pass the background check. Um, but we are searching for college graduates. We have had some applicants who are retired um, or who are just kind of wanting to give back now that they've served or they've been in their career for 20 years now and they just want to give back. So um, it's really open to anybody. So but but you're looking for people I guess who are dedicated to helping people. Yes mm -hmm. definitely. Versus That's a big factor. We, we look at if they have volunteer experience in the past is it do they want to really give back and help the community? That's an important thing we look yeah. for. So now there's a, you know, um, depends on who you talk to, but there's upward of, upward of 15,000 homeless in the state, I think more. Um, would you ever consider using a home, taking a homeless person in to the program and having a homeless person help agencies that help the homeless? Hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, I think that for our VISTAs, they, we do see that they have, um, how can I say it? I mean, I suppose if the homeless person did have education, we do look at experience and everything. You want the highest qualified We do want really qualified VISTA, VISTA, VISTA find, members yeah. um, who we can be sure will complete that one year. That's really important. Yeah. Complete that full-time one-year service. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, like Do they I said, always open. work out? I mean, in the human condition, things mm -hmm. don't always work yeah. out. Uh, what happens? Well, uh, that's funny you mentioned because um, 
there were at least with my campus, we had seven teams. And out of the Did seven- you say campus, Daniel? Yeah, campus. So for us, we were, it was more of like a militaristic style. So we had combat boots FEMA. and things like that with FEMA. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Not too, FEMA, you know. <laughs> Right. So uh, we had seven teams within our unit. And out of those seven teams, my team was the only one that kept all their members together because it does get difficult it does get hard um, there are other opportunities that may be offered to them and in that case uh, if there are other opportunities offered to them let's say a career or job americorps applauds them because that's what we're working towards they're working towards to better themselves the community and also to create a better future so if that does happen yeah but also sometimes it does get hard people get homesick and things of that nature and so as the visit team leader it's my job to kind of wade them through that and kind of help them get through that but sometimes it doesn't work out and so you know we offer our best but if they go home we still offer the support for them too well, uh, we're in the closing minute or two of our program, and I, I wanted to explore one other thing with you. Um, uh, you know, when Kennedy thought this idea up, it was really a beautiful idea. It was a mirror image of the Peace Corps out, out, out offshore. Mm -hmm. um, and now it still exists after all these years. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the funding is not great. Um, it sounds like there's a lot of dedicated people who help. Um, and I wonder this. Uh, based on your experience so far with this program, what would you like to see it evolve into? You know, and, and mind you, I believe mm -hmm. that there ought to be mandatory, you know, national service. This is a kind of a, a good candidate for that. Uh, we need this. But, but what would you like to see happen to VISTA, happen to AmeriCorps, happen to FEMA Corps for that matter, mm -hmm. uh, to make this kind of service for well, I, I say young people, but it's really everyone. Uh, a a you know a bigger part of, of the national the national connection. Well, I know for me, I I agree with you. I would like people to definitely you know make sure they serve either a year or two, and it's really helpful in appreciating the, the country. What I would like to see, um, I guess, if you. I don't want to make people do anything, you know, but maybe right after high school before they go to college, you know, um, create more of a effort to recruit there. And so that way they already have more or less a year experience. They're able to explore what is it they want to do while giving back to the community. Sure. Take a year off and do this. Exactly. And yeah. that way when you go back to college, you're not wasting money trying to figure out what major you want to do or where you want to go in life. You're yeah. giving to people to help you. That's what I would like to see. And I know for Hawaii, I would like more local candidates to be applying for this opportunity, I think it's a really good learning opportunity. Um, you get a lot of networking. Um, and then I would like to see more people in Hawaii just get involved in our government and be um, an active citizen. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, everybody says we have a, you know, a, a, an imbalance, a, a disparity of income and mm -hmm. circumstance. Uh, and VISTA is a connection. Um, VISTA s sort of reaches out um, and um, it would be good for Hawaii to have mm -hmm. people go out there and, and be involved that way. I hope that yeah. happens. Okay. I hope it happens under Aloha United Way. Good for you guys for your service, Thank serving you. the country. Thank you. It touches me. <laughs> <laughs> That's Daniel Jones, a VISTA team leader, uh, and um, Angie Chapman, VISTA program coordinator for the Aloha United Way. We've been talking about AmeriCorps VISTA in Hawaii. Thank you so much, both. Thank, Thank you. you.